Hi everyone and welcome to September Favourites where I do a roundup of all of my favourite products that I've been trying both on and off camera during the month of September and newsflash there are a lot of products in this video today that I've been trying off camera and never mentioned in any of my previous videos so if you are interested in finding out what those products are and seriously I am here for them they are superb definitely stick around I'll also be updating you on any beauty news that's gone off during this month so let's get straight on with it. If you're new here, hi my name's Gemma, I upload new content on YouTube every single week. In fact for the months of October and November we are going to three videos a week so make sure you don't miss any of those videos by clicking on the like button, the subscribe button and also the notification bell. Let's jump straight into the beauty news and I want to talk about this little product straight away. This is from Trini London and it's the BFF All Day Foundation. I was extremely excited to hear about this product and instead of contacting the brand before I ordered it, I was so overwhelmed with excitement I decided to just go out and buy it. So I bought my shade which is rose and it came and I tried it and I thought I've tried this before pretty sure I've tried this before. So if you were wondering if you are a big fan of Trini London or you looked at the website and saw this new product which is categorized as new, it is not a new product. So uh, where is the older product? Where have I put it? So both of these two products look entirely different and they're also called different things and I'm also different shades in both of them. So this is the BFF All Day foundation that I've just spoken about and this one is the BFF Rebalanced Tinted Serum. They are both the same product. This has been rebranded, it's been repackaged, it is the same thing. It may say that it's been tweaked slightly but I have confirmation from the brand to say that it is exactly the same product, exactly the same ingredients, exactly the same formulation. It is my favourite product that Trini London do. I think it is a superb product. This is the more matte of the foundations that they do. It's not as glowy, it's a very natural looking matte foundation and it has slightly more coverage than the other foundation that they do which I think is the Detox, is it? I can't remember. I'll have it listed on screen for you now. The other one is slightly glowier. This is more matte and it's more long lasting as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I do think BFF All Day is a great name for it, but I was slightly confused. So uh, I now have two of them that I need to get through. But um, they are great anyway. I just wanted to let you know if you were going to buy this because you thought it was new. It is not. It's just got new packaging and a new name and some new shades. Another bit of beauty news for you, Olaplex have finally answered everyone's prayers and released the Olaplex number no. 5P Blonde Enhancer Toning Conditioner. They previously had the Blonde Enhancer Toning Shampoo which was great but it's my preference personally and I'm not going to use these because I like a warmer edge to my hair these days. I don't really want to go cool but it's my preference if I am going to use this sort of product to use it in a conditioner rather than in a shampoo because this stuff is potent. This is a bluey purpley shampoo to take all the warm undertones out of your hair so it'll take any yellowness away from your hair so if you're wanting a really cool crisp really white blonde you're going to be able to get it with these two products. I personally would only buy the conditioner in future if I was going to buy this because for me the shampoo stays in your hair a little bit too long. These things are really full of pigmentation and you only need this in your hair for a minute then wash it out. It's done its job. This is so so potent I would advise wearing gloves because if you have natural nails like me this will dye your nails pinky purple. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> I learned the hard way, so hopefully I'm passing on that information to you so you don't make the same mistakes as me. But I don't see the need for both of these together. I think it was great that they brought out a shampoo, but because of the length of time that a shampoo stays in the hair, rather than a conditioner that you can just put in and wash straight out again, I would Personally, if I was recommending either of these products for you, if you do want that clean, crisp, white, blonde hair, a really platinum edge to it, I would only go for the conditioner. I don't know whether that will be a popular opinion or not. I got both of these in PR. I'm going to pass these on to my mum because she does have a beautiful, cool, white hair and these will really take out any yellow tones that she has in her hair naturally. But uh, yeah, I won't be using them because I like my hair a little warmer. Update on a product that I've tried this month and really liked it when I first tried it, but I was just a bit unsure. This is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Foreplay Mascara Primer. Honestly, I have not applied mascara on my lashes without this since trying it. I actually got a tip from one of my subscribers, Chrissy. Hi, thank you very much for this tip. It seriously worked. You apply this and then you apply mascara immediately after. You don't allow this to dry down. Honestly, it works a treat. So when I first tried this, I tried it in a Get Ready With Me video. If you haven't seen that already, I'll link it up here for you. It's quite comical in places. You really don't wanna miss that video. But I tried it and then I went on to the other lash, allowed this lash primer to dry down and then applied mascara over the top. You can do it that way, but it's slightly more difficult to get mascara through your lashes once this has dried down. So just like Chrissy said, I tried it the day after she recommended this to me apply a really good layer of the primer and then immediately go in with your mascara of choice. It doesn't need to be a Too Faced mascara, it can be any mascara and wow, volume, length, flutteriness. I have this in my lashes today and I don't think my lashes have ever looked as good as they have done since I've been using this product. I speak very highly of it. I have tried and tested it to the ends of time and it works. The other reason I like this is because it's black. So you don't get those little white specks on the end of your lashes. This also doesn't go bobbly. You don't get those little balls on the end of your lashes. And I haven't found that any length that this has given me has fallen off and flaked throughout the day. This has just been solid and um, it hasn't smudged, but I guess that's because of the mascara choice that I've applied over the top of this. But yeah, no flaking, no shedding, no smudging, just fantastic. You all know that this palette is going to feature in this video. I couldn't leave it out because it is one of my favorites. In fact, I said this in a previous video, this is probably the best 65 pounds I have spent this entire month. Yes, it's an investment, it's 65 pounds, but you do get a lot for your money and every single one of these shades can be teamed with any of the other shades in the palette. They all go superbly well together and it's such a wearable palette. The mattes are creamy and soft. There's a slight dampness to the shadows so you don't get any kickback in the pan whatsoever. There's no fallout on the cheek. Even with the glitters, if you apply them with your fingers, they stick. There's some really beautiful wet look shadows in here as well. I actually have this one on which is called Sheen Today and Sheen is exactly what it does. It's just so super soft and fluttery and just very, very girly, pretty shadows. You can have daytime, evening, absolutely any look can be created with this. I have this on my lids today and I just love it. In fact, I think this is the nicest look that I've created with this palette so far. And I really, really liked the look that I created in the video that I mentioned earlier that I listed, the Get Ready With Me video where I wore this shade Muse, which is to die for really is. And I have to fight myself every single time I break this palette out not to use that shade again because I want to get through them all. Gorgeous. Natasha Denona, I need a new palette worth every single penny. 
bring on the house labs if you haven't seen my full review and wear test on the house labs new concealer this is the triclone skin tech hydrating and depuffing concealer then again i will link that up here for you i'll also link it at the end of this video because regardless of what i say in this video uh, it's always worth going and having a look at the after images after 10 hours and just seeing how this wears throughout the day to see whether it will actually suit you it definitely suits me and i just adore it i think it is superb really buildable coverage so this goes on medium coverage and then you can build this up quite easily to full coverage i'm not overly keen on the super shiny finish but I'm getting used to it it's usually not my thing I'm warming to it I do prefer it with a powder over the top just to mattify it down a little bit because I think it looks more natural it looks more like skin rather than makeup sitting on the surface of the skin but the full coverage of this product wins me over every single time um the shade that I've gone for is shade 11, which is light neutral, perfection on me, really nice. I don't like to go for something that's overly bright underneath the eye, so you'll never see me going for something that's one to two shades lighter than my natural skin tone. Usually it's only like half a shade lighter is enough for me, otherwise I look like a deer in headlights and really, really surprised. <laughs> it's not a great look, but it's really good so if you are my shade twin and you also don't like a bright under eye then shade 11 light neutral will probably be your thing but i i, I just i love it also if you take a look at the full review you will see some comments from people who have already used this concealer so they are all subscribers who have been super super helpful to help you all out if you are considering buying this they will let you know their experiences, good or bad. I mean, we're an open book on this channel. If it doesn't work for somebody, surely you want to know about it. So go and check out that video and check out the comments section. And there is just a wealth of knowledge from all of the subscribers from this channel and their experiences with this concealer. Before we move on to all of the products that I've been trying off camera, I have to give this product a mention. This is the only skincare product in this video, but it's one that I just can't get enough of and I can't stop speaking highly of. It's from Beauty of Joseon and it's the Dynasty Cream. Now I actually mentioned this in a video that went live in August as well as one that went live in September. It's a dupes video. For me, this is a full on dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Water Cream. If you fancy trying that, get your hands on this first because I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think they are giving away samples for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Water Cream, so get your hands on one of those, try those. If you like it, try this because it's stunning. Very similar consistency, similar look on the surface of the skin once you've applied this. It's just as hydrating, it's just as nourishing, it's just as lightweight. I just love everything about it and all the ingredients that are within the Dynasty Cream are also either identical or do a very similar job to the ingredients that are in the Charlotte Tilbury Cream as well. So that's as far as we're going to go with that but it needed a mention because it so deserves it. So I haven't powdered my skin today because I wanted to show you this next product in action. I have been dreaming about this product ever since Huda Beauty brought out the Easy Bake Loose Powder, which I think is phenomenal. I mean, it's just amazing. I am the shade Pound Cake in the Easy Bake Loose Powder, and uh, I am also the shade Pound Cake in the Easy Bake pressed powder. This is the Easy Bake and Snatched Pressed Brightening and Setting Powder. It is unreal. It really is. So you can use this in lots of different ways. It has a loose little bottom there that you can lift up and it has a sponge in the bottom which I haven't used because I just choose to use my own sponge but this would be great on the go to carry around in your handbag to just touch up on the go where you've gone a little bit shiny. 
So I haven't powdered at all. So let's do this in a couple of ways. I'm gonna get my Tatty Beauty Blenderful, which I really love. I'm so sorry, it's it's been discontinued because Tatty Beauty is no more, but I still think it's a great product. And then I'm going to try it with a brush on the other half of my face as well. So I'm just going to dab in the product. It's such a hard pressed product. It's, you don't get any kickback in the pan at all. It's not one of those powders that's overly powdery, but you can sculpt the face with this. You can pop it underneath your contour just to carve your contour out a little bit more and make it pop. I tend not to use it that way, but I do like to use it as a de-oiler because I've found that during mid perimenopause, my skin is a little bit oilier than it used to be, which is great for me for my dry areas because my dry areas are disappearing, but not so great for makeup, longevity and shine. So, show you the difference. Just going to pat, I'll pat that in between my brows as well, just so you can see. Look at that, look at that. Shine, no shine, shine, no shine, shine, no shine. <laughs> so amazing, this product. I'm not quite sure if they do a translucent version. I really hope they come out with one because I would go for that every day of the week. Let's try the other side, which as you can see, shiny, not shiny. This does not look cakey or powdery at all. Just lovely. I'm gonna try the other side with a brush. I don't know why I look surprised. I've obviously tried this before several times, otherwise it wouldn't be in this video, but it does shock me every single time I use it. It's just such a great product. I prefer it on the side that I used with a brush. A brush for me is the way to go. And even with a brush, no kickback in the pan. So hard pressed and just unreal. This is a great powder. Next up, we've got the Shiseido Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation. I didn't think I was gonna like this. I bought this to do an individual review for everybody and then never got around to doing it. So uh, yeah, I didn't think I was gonna like it because I didn't think it was going to give me enough coverage, which it does. It's buildable and yeah, definitely is enough for me. And I also thought that it was going to be too glowy. I thought it was going to be like putting the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter all over my skin and then not covering it over with something slightly more matte or just something to diffuse it a little bit. Actually, it's not like that. So it obviously is glowy, but it's more of a radiant finish rather than a sparkly finish. And um, I didn't think I'd like that because I thought that that would emphasize all of my pores and texture. And that is not the case at all. I'm not saying this is going to be a foundation that I reach for daily, but, it fits beautifully into the other Shiseido products. I think there was definitely an opening for a foundation just like this. It does contain an SPF and that SPF is SPF 30, which I'm not mad at. At least it's SPF 30, not like SPF 10, like you see in some other foundations. But still, please don't rely on the SPF within this foundation. The SPF filter that's in here is octanoxate. So if you are sensitive to that particular ingredient, which many are, this is one to avoid. This also is quite heavy on the drying alcohol and fragrance. So once again, if your skin is really dry and sensitive and you feel like it flares up with any drying alcohol on the skin, one to avoid as well. So um, I think it looks really beautiful. And the consistency of this is really, really nice. As you can see, it's very runny. It's not watery, but it's definitely on the runny side. I'll just take away a little bit of this and then I'll show you what the overall finish is. I'm just gonna pop that on there with a foundation brush and then show you the back of my hand and it's 
really illuminating and very radiant without being overly sparkly. I really like this. I'm not saying I'm going to be reaching for this every single day, especially now we're verging into autumn and winter where I'm going to have scarves on so I want a foundation on my skin that's more transfer resistant and this definitely isn't a transfer resistant foundation. I also don't think this is a super long lasting foundation either, but they are the two reasons really why I won't be reaching for this from here on in, I'm just wanting something else out of my foundation as we're going into those colder months. This little pot of joy actually blew me away with how much I liked it because once again, I bought this and I thought I'm never gonna use that, just not gonna use it. I remember the NARS matte concealer, which I use all the time, but definitely not on my under eyes because I find it quite drying underneath there and it just shows every single last bit of texture and every fine line underneath my eye. It was just hideous, but on the face, glorious. This one, I just thought, oh, another light reflecting concealer that's going to have very little coverage that I'm just... I'm going to be very underwhelmed with just another one to add to the list that's also going to cost me quite a lot of money and then is going to sit in a drawer. Not so. So if I want a little bit of extra coverage with one of my regular foundations, this is what I'll reach for because it is so super flattering underneath the eyes. It's got that lovely hydrating creamy texture. This does not dry my under eyes out at all. It doesn't sit in any dryness. It also doesn't crease throughout the day either. And it's quite long lasting for this type of product. So this is from NARS and it is the light reflecting eye brightener. I have two shades of this. I have Night Swan and I also have Golden Eye. Golden Eye would be my summer shade and Night Swan would be my winter shade. So I'm gonna show you this. The only problem that I have with this product is the tub. And I like to use my finger with this type of product and uh, it's very difficult because you get it all over your nail and you get gouges out of the product rather than a nice clean swipe. So here are the swatches and it's so light reflecting and I have really strong lights in front of me that I'm not sure you'll be able to see this properly. So on the left, we have the shade Night Swan and on the right, we have the shade Golden Eye. Both are quite similar. Golden Eye has slightly warmer undertones to it. So would lend itself really well to those summer months where I've got a little bit of color. But Night Swan is just perfect underneath the eye for me today. And uh, if I was to place a little bit underneath my eye, it would be extremely brightening and reflecting. So would just disguise those under eye circles, not necessarily with pigment, but with reflective particles and it does it very well. Although I use the NARS Light Reflecting Concealer over the top of another concealer to give that first concealer a little bit more welly, not only in the coverage department, but also in the light reflecting department as well, you can easily use this concealer on its own. In fact, it blends superbly well into bare skin. So if you're just running a few errands, you're not wanting perfection, this is the concealer that I would happily go to every single day of the week. If I'm in a rush, I'm just wanting to look more awake, a little bit brighter, a slightly more polished, a bit of mascara, a bit of the concealer and a bit of blush, and I'm out and it's lovely. My next favorite goes to Kosas. This is the Brow Pop Nano Ultra Fine Detailing Pen. I have the shade Medium Brown, which is great for me. I This wasn't even on my radar, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even know this existed until I looked at the Allure Best of Beauty Awards and saw that this was a contender and I believe a winner as well. This is the finest detailing pen I think I have ever seen in my life. And it's definitely the finest one that I've personally used on my brows. I just felt the need to get it and try it 
for myself. Look at how thin this is. Now, I thought my NYX Microbrow Pencil was a fine tip. This is half the size, so you can get some really fine hair-like strokes. In fact, I did a little brow on the back of my hand and I'm not quite sure you'll be able to see this properly so I took a picture of it which I'll show you on the screen now and it looks real I mean it looks they look like hair so if you have absolutely no brow hairs whatsoever this may be a fantastic product for you I don't think I'll get full use out of this, although I think it is phenomenal. You don't get a lot of product for your money and you do have to be quite careful how much of the product you dispense at the top. Otherwise, because it's quite a hard product so that it's not too soft, that you're not gonna lose that fine tip, it does break off if you get too much up at once so just be warned do not waste the product because it's absolute diamond dust so uh, yeah it's it's a phenomenal product especially if you have no brow hairs and you want to create a brow to frame your features this is the one that I would recommend for you because it is so fine. It is so, so fine. Really, really beautiful. It's slightly too deep for me if I'm going to map out my brows. I have used it that way. So I map out my brows using my NYX Microbrow Pencil, which is in the shade that absolutely suits me. And then I go in with fine hair-like strokes to fill in the brow. It's a great product. I do have another brow product that I want to mention though, which I think is easier to use than this. But if you have no brow hairs, this this is the one for you. It is fantastic. This is the product I wanted to mention. It is foolproof and I'm kicking myself for not getting my hands on it sooner. It's the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Powder. I am the shade three, which is warm, light brown. I could go slightly lighter than this. So if you're my shade twin and you like your brows to stand out a little bit less than I have today, then maybe go one shade down or even two shades down. It's so lovely this and it suits a purpose. If you are in a rush and you just want to fill in your brows and go, this is the one. This is the one. It is, like I said, full proof. So I like to use it with my Anastasia Beverly Hills 7B brush. So on the 7B brush, you have a spoolie on the end. Please don't look how filthy this is and judge me. I have used it today. This is not months old. I will clean this after I film this video. I do promise. And then you have a really fine tipped brush on the other end, which can also create really hair-like strokes if you want to do that with this powder. I don't think it's what it's designed for, but you can do it if you so wish. So I like to just fill in the brows and I, I do do those hair-like strokes, but you can be so haphazard with this. You can be really quick and it doesn't matter if you get in a mess because it's very easy to clean up and it's so quick and so easy to apply. I have this on today. Some of you may have noticed that my brows brows don't look the same as they normally do. I usually use my NYX Lift and Snatch pen to fill in my brows with those hair-like strokes, but I mean, I really like the effect of this and it takes me half the amount of time, maybe even a third of the amount of time than it usually does when I'm doing intricate strokes and having to be quite precise with my NYX Lift and Snatch pen, which is phenomenal. It's a great product and I wouldn't be without it, but I really like this, really, really like this and it doesn't go anywhere. I'm super, super impressed. So that is it. They are all of my September favorites. There were a lot of them. Thank you very much for sticking with me to the end. Also, thank you to all of you who wished me a happy birthday for my birthday back on the 13th of September. I think a lot of you were slightly confused when my birthday actually was because I filmed 
on my actual birthday, but then that video did not go live until a little bit later. So some of you were thinking that the live date of that video was my birthday and maybe we were birthday twins. But uh, yes, my birthday was on the 13th of September. I had a lovely, lovely time. We just went out for a meal, just myself, Wes and the kids and just, yeah, we, it was just really nice. And I did wear the top that I filmed in to go out for dinner and I don't regret it one bit, not one bit. I was really comfortable. Anyway, thank you very much for all of your birthday wishes. Please don't forget to give this video a like, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos coming up in the very near future. We are going to a three video a week month for the next couple of months. So yes, don't miss any of those. So hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.